So let's continue. We said, okay, the fundamental driving force is delta G over Vm, okay, the molar free energy divided by the molar volume. Okay, and then when we think of the actual motion of the green boundary, how exactly does the green boundary move? The first one, I would call it uh, straightening of green boundary. What does that mean? I have this initial green boundary between two greens. Is that a straight boundary? No, right? It's not a straight boundary. And straightening of the green boundary means initially curved, tortuous green boundary would have a tendency to become straightened. The initial total green boundary energy, they want to get uh, minimized, get reduced. Make sense? So I initially start with torturous green boundary in order to minimize, to reduce A times gamma sigma. A for what? Green boundary area times gamma green boundary energy. Sigma means I may have different green boundary energy for different uh, types of misorientation, right? All these have to be minimized to minimize the internal area if if we are talking about the same material. As a result, we start with tortures become flat. Naturally, that's what you can imagine. Okay, straightening, so-called straightening of the green boundary. And let's say the driving force for the so-called straightening of the interface, in this case, straightening of the green boundary. Okay, and what we learned in physics for a so-called curved surface, that would be surface tension. All energy tries to make the curved surface flatten and which drive the curve towards its center, right? When the curve become infinitely flat, the radius curvature become infinite. And what you learn in physics quite often would be data P. What is data P? The pressure difference across a curved surface or interface would be gamma, times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. What is gamma? The so-called, quite often, the interfacial energy or surface energy. R1, R2 are the two of the gradient direction, the radius curvature for those two gradient direction. And for simple case, if we assume we are part of a spherical the, the surface is part of a spherical surface. Then our R1 and R2 would be the same. Let's just for simplicity, we're dealing with just a, let's say a, a spherical green. Then R1, the two direction would be the same, the radius curvature, make sense? And as a result, our delta P would be two gamma over R. Again, what is gamma? Interfacial energy, in this case, green boundary energy. What is R? radius of curvature for my local point, right? Okay, and you may ask how exactly did we get this relationship? I here have a, a quick drawing just to refresh our mind how people get to this relationship. What I'm drawing is a wedge shape, a wedge shape, part of a cylinder, outside of the cylinder, from here I'm pointing at the cylinder, what? Axis or center, right? Here is my cylinder outer surface. Make sense? I'm looking at this piece of curved surface. Do you see it's a curved surface? Okay. And I'm taking this wedge shape. R is for the radius for my cylinder. R is for my radius of cylinder. Okay, and then I have gamma L, gamma L, that's my so-called uh, surface tension, if you just think of it. Surface tension. It's trying gamma L on one side, it's trying to pull the top boundary up, make sense? The bottom is trying to pull the boundary down. 
but uh, both gamma L are pointing along the so-called tangential direction. Make sense? And because of that, because of this gamma, they would this tangent, they would have a tendency for this curved surface to move which way? I'm pointing the arrow going this way. Make sense? Because of this gamma L, gamma L pointing two directions. And then I'm going to write something like this. 2L, why 2L? Because I'm having force on one side, I'm force, having force on the other side. Gamma times L, that's the linear force along one side, linear force on the other side. And then, if we resolve the force, that becomes sine of delta theta. What is delta theta? Delta theta is this small angle for my wedge. Okay. Sine delta theta over 2, that tells us how much of this force, if we resolve it, going along the radial direction? How much of the force is going along radial direction? From the here, all the way pointing towards the axis or the center. That is my total force pointing towards the axis or the center. That total force would be delta P. What is delta P? The pressure difference between inside versus outside. Outside is trying to push it inside. Delta P times R times delta theta. What is R? Radius, right? R is my radius for my for my cylinder. R times delta theta gives us what? From here to here, make sense? R times, this is R times delta theta from here to here. That's my R times delta theta times L. L is from here to here. So these two terms time together give us a what? The total area for this small piece of outer surface. Area times pressure difference is my net force. Pointing which way? towards the axis. That force is equivalent as if it's caused in by this two surface tension force. So from here, if we do the simple math, delta theta sine and the delta theta would cancel, two and the two would cancel, we would have the relationship of delta P equals R over, sorry, gamma over L. And then if we are talking about two dimension, Going the curvature is not only along one direction, it's actually going along two directions when we have this. So that's how roughly we get we get uh, this equation from here. And then we said, okay, the pressure difference, pressure difference that drives what? Drives in this case liquid film to shrink, but in our case, it's solid the green boundary curve the green boundary to straighten up. It's this guy, this delta P, okay? This is the driving force to straighten up the green boundary per unit area. It would be delta P is 2 gamma over L would be my driving force, which is delta G over Vm, delta G over Vm, okay? This is for the case of straightening of green boundary.